friends. Um, you should all be watching ByteConf instead of me now. Um, it's this really cool online conference that's totally free, and you can get right on the home. Um, streamed on Twitch. I'm going to be speaking in about like seven and a half hours um, on here, so go check this out. But um, I did want to still live stream um, today because somebody asked on one of my previous videos um, uh, about how to make... Um, uh, reduce the output from Babel. So if we look at our Babel REPL, I was showing, I think it was just yesterday, um, going in the Babel REPL, you have pass, the extend. Got like a, an explosion of code just to support classes. Um, and there's actually, hold on a second, I think my uh, kid or somebody's gonna come in. Yes, it was my dog. My wife sent my dog in. Um, yeah, so how do we get rid of all this code? Because if you have uh, multiple files in your project, which you probably do, um, and you um, have a class in every single one of those, which if you are using React, then you probably, uh, then you have a lot of duplicate code all throughout your code base. So um, how do we avoid this? It would be well, like if we were to actually write this ourselves, we would put all of these functions, all this uh, stuff in a separate file, and then we just require these as needed, right? So that is what I'm gonna show you how to accomplish using um, the Babel plugin transform runtime um, or Babel, yeah, Babel plugin transform. Um, so here we've got this input, we're importing React, the counter, um, pretty normal stuff going on here. So um, I've got in my package.json Babel CLI, so I can Babel in my scripts, Babel core, because you need that. Um, that's the core of Babel. Um, uh, proposal class properties, so I can use this and my constructor, um, transform runtime, that's what we're going to be using, and then preset env for classes and whatnot, and uh, React for JS. Um, so if we do without um, the plugin, <laughs> that should be. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Go fix my. Uh... Yeah, never did. Never ran it. Um, huh, that's weird. works oh I tried to like fix things up so that it would be nice with. There we go, that's better. Okay, so um, we take this input and we run it through um, without the runtime plugin. And uh, we get that explosion of code, the, a bunch of stuff for class call, uh, define property, create class, extends, uh, type of like just a silly amount of, of uh, stuff that it like it makes sense. It needs to exist. Like we need that code because it don't support things. Um, it's part of the the transform, but it's like a bunch of code. And if you have uh, I don't know like hundred files, where you, once you using these features, then you're going to have a lot of duplicate code. Now gzip will help with that. Um, it'll like find those commonalities and and uh, compress it. But you're still going to have to parse and run. Um, all of these functions over and over again. So it's it's not optimal, you don't wanna have this. So um, if I look at my Babel RC with the runtime plugin, I simply just add plugin, plugins array, and then I uh, check out the output and it's slimmer. So I've, I'm getting my interrupt required default from Babel runtime helpers. Um, and so I'm still going to have the code but it's only in one place, it's in this module. Um, and then I also have 
Let's find a way. We had possible. Um, yeah, so that is right here. We're importing that. So we're, we do a whole bunch of these ports uh, for Babel runtime helpers, and that results in my dog is playing around. With uh, that results in a lot less code. So uh, we've got 71 lines versus 81, but um, these lines are like if we were to here. Let's format this with. Um, just so we can sense it. So we've, uh, we've got something like 118 line, lines versus 204. And the more features that you're using, the more Babel helpers that you're going to need. Um, and so the, the more you look at code. And it's more than just the extra um, almost 100 lines in this file. It, uh, that represents 100 extra lines in every file that you're using these features. So Babel plugin uh, runtime is really helpful for that. Um, it looks like y'all are having some trouble with my audio. I'm sorry. Sometimes this happens. Is it like clicky and scratchy? I never know when that's going to happen and I don't know what causes it. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but hopefully like I'm going to put this up on, on GitHub and you can go look at it later. Um, let's see. I feel like there was something else. Oh yeah. So there are a bunch of options here. Um, core JS. Um, if you want to have, um, have it use CoreJS uh, plugins for, uh, or not plugins, but uh, polyfills, or if we were going to use a weak map, say we'll just use app equal. And then we'll run that again. Okay. NRB, I have an alias to npm run build. Um, so it, it's not polyfilled for us with the runtime plugin, but we can make it the polyfill. Add some options to this. And yes, true. And then if we run build again, well, I expected that to work. Anyway, I actually don't use uh, CoreJS. I use um, needed with. There we go. So I've got this blog post where I talk about how I polyfill stuff, and we're in the process of building this polyfill service for all of um, because I, yeah, uh, but yeah, so we don't need to worry about poly. Um, so yeah, you can look into self uh, regenerator. That's good for um, if you're going to be using a weight. So let's try that. Make this think. And then eight. <laughs> this, stuff. this is just garbage, of course. Here, I don't want to do async function stuff. Um, wait. Okay, cool. So then, um, regenerator is turned on by default. Oh. Oh, okay. I defined false string too, but okay. So that was what my need to make. I don't even know here. Let's see for J S number one. Oh, okay. Whatever. Like I said, I don't really care about. That. Um, so um, we don't need any options here. We're doing. Just leave that as it is and build again. I'll wait for it to finish this time. So I'm thrown for a loop. And if we look at the with runtime, now we're getting regenerator. Without the runtime now. But yeah, here it is. 
that's a, a fair amount of code itself. And oh, it uh, async to generate. That's what I'm. That's this thing. Okay. So anyway, um, hopefully that all is helpful to you. I definitely pretty strongly recommend you use uh, use this. I don't see like especially if you're bundling with webpack or rollup if you're not then maybe i could see not doing this um but yeah if you're going to be bundling strongly recommend that okay um let me just check any questions uh, oh okay so it sounds like my audio was randomly cutting in and out what's actually probably happening is the the whole stream is cutting in and out people have been complaining about this here's the problem with live streaming is it's really dependent on uh, latency of a lot of things so youtube could be having a problem or uh, my computer could be having a problem or uh, my internet connection could be having a problem and so this is why my egghead stuff is recorded locally because there are fewer uh, points of failure but when i'm live streaming I, I live stream because it doesn't take as much time as like recording a real video so you have to deal with some of that. And I'm sorry about that. If that really bothers you, then you don't have to watch. But um, yeah, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. Um, have I ever tried Neutrino JS? Um, I don't think so. Double check, I know it. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen this. I've never tried it. Um, at PayPal, we use um, Kraken. I don't really like Kraken either, to be honest. Um, I prefer just regular Express or maybe Koa. I don't know. I've never tried it before, but it seems kind of cool. Um, I don't do a whole lot of Node server stuff. Okay, cool. I'm going to jump out, and uh, you should go to byteconf.com. Check out what is going on there because it's great. And um, I will see you all later. Bye.